Stand clear. We went from a box on wheels to a whole freaking kitchen, right? The containerized kitchen provides the Army with the ability to perform large-scale feeding and everything that we need to prepare up to 800 meals three times a day. My name is Staff Sergeant Nicholas Davis. I'm an advanced culinary NCO at Joint Culinary Center of Excellence, Field Operations Training Branch. Today, I'll be going over all the equipment that an Army culinary specialist uses on the containerized kitchen. An Army culinary specialist is someone who has been certified to perform culinary duties to support the United States Army and all of their feeding needs. Now here is our cooking center. We've got these grates right here that allow us to suspend our cooking pots or pans above our modern burner unit. Our modern burner unit generates about 52,000 BTUs. All right, that's a lot of cooking power. We can fry, saute, boil, anything we need to on this portion of the containerized kitchen. Right here is our cooking pot. Cooking pot is nestled in the cooking pot cradle assembly. What this does is it contains the heat from the modern burner unit around that pot. This is a 15 gallon pot, and as you can imagine, trying to boil 15 gallons of water will take quite some time. This right here is gonna cut that time down and reduce the risk of people getting burnt or heating up the area unnecessarily. Right here, we've got a large griddle. You'll see around it, we've got a splash guard, pancakes, bacon, eggs, sausage, steak, hash browns. You name it, we can do it here on this griddle. I've actually gone so far as to do like a hibachi grill. Underneath the griddle is my grease trap. This piece right here just slides out. Anything that I scrape off will funnel into there and I can discard it. Over here, we've got a convection oven. It works much the same way as a gas oven that you'll find in your house. We're gonna use our modern burner unit underneath as our heat source. Inside is a large fan on the back that's gonna force that heated air around, regulate the temperature inside the oven, and decrease our cooking time, increasing our potential yield. Next to it, We've got a tray pack heater. It is exactly what it says it is. When we don't have the capacity to hold food in a refrigerator, we're gonna use the UGR heat and serve ration. That UGR heat and serve ration comes in the form of food, shelf stable, contained in heat resistant plastic trays. We'll load this up with up to 24 tray packs Add water, let that heat warm those tray packs through. Next to the tray pack heater, we've got a fully functioning sink, running water, heated, that'll drain outside. There's the ability to run soap through it. So now, as you're cooking, you can clean your hands, you can wipe out, rinse off your, your vegetables, fruits, all right, wipe out your utensils. Here in this corner, we have a warmer, a warming cabinet. Now, this warming cabinet is so critical to the function of the containerized kitchen. We can cook all day long, but I need some way to hold my food safely, maintain that temperature prior to serving it to my personnel. This warming cabinet affords me the option to cook a large amount of food, keep it at a maintained temperature, outside the temperature danger zone and continue on with my cooking process. Next to my warming cabinet, going in the opposite way, I've got two industrial refrigerators. Now we'll talk about how we serve. We can configure our cooking center to be a serving line. I'm gonna remove these grates we're gonna exercise caution when removing these because these will be hot if I've been cooking on them. So I'll slide this off, just get it out of the way. I'll grab my serving line divider. 
place that on top right there. This is designed to fit any standard size pan. I can put them in here and I can serve hot food or I can put ice in there and serve cold food if necessary. Can't do it at the same time though. I've got shields here on the back side of my cooking center. Those shields are removable. These shields act to keep all the heat from these multiple cooking surfaces on this side of the kitchen. Up above here, I've got my industrial hood vent system that's gonna vent out excess heat, diesel exhaust. But also, over here, I've got two large industrial fans that are also going to vent excess hot air out of the containerized kitchen. Now, once we remove as much of the hot air as possible, I can turn on my ECU or environmental control unit. That's my air conditioning. I can cool my cooking area down a little bit to make it a little more comfortable for today's Army culinary specialists. This side is gonna be for our serving. We're gonna prep, we're gonna serve uh, things like salad, our desserts, beverages. Over here, we've got some insulated food containers for storage. We've got insulated beverage containers or dispensers. Right here, we've got a 10 gallon and a 15 gallon pot that we're gonna use for cooking. You'll notice right here, we've got some tray slides. So as people come through and they get their food, we got a little spot for them to rest their trays. So starting over here, we'll go over the assortment of cutlery that comes with the containerized kitchen. We've got our paring knife, standard three inch paring knife. We've got our six inch utility knife, utility knife or the rigid boning knife. This right here, sure some of y'all are familiar with, all right? Michael Myers, this is a 10 inch chef's knife. Now this right here, we're gonna do a lot of our major cutting. We got ribs, we gotta cut up a lot of vegetables. This is the knife that we're gonna use for that. We've got a scimitar or a steak knife. Long, used for cutting meat. A lot of times we'll get large pieces of meat. We gotta break them down, make them a little bit smaller. All right, we'll use this to cut that. What kind of large meat do you get? We have what's called a steamship round, which is basically the, the hind quarter of a cow. We'll cook that up. All right, car, carve that. Prime rib, turkeys, things like that. Pork roast, any of those large cuts of meat that we may get, all right, we're gonna use our scimitar knife to cut those up. And then to ensure that all of our knives keep a straight edge, we've got a, a butcher steel that we can use to make sure that we do all of our cuts properly. Next, I've got my heavy duty neoprene gloves. We use these gloves when we're pulling stuff out of hot water. So when we're preparing our meals, more often than not, our water is gonna get up to about 170, 180 degrees. Uh, we don't wanna go too much higher than that boiling. That increases the risk of burning yourself and is going to uh, increase the evaporation of the water and increase our water consumption rate. We've got a can opener, standard everyday can opener that you see at your house, but we open a lot of big cans. Our slotted spoon, standard serving spoon, 15 inch serving spoon. When that one won't cut it, we've got our 21 inch serving spoon. A lot of times if we've got a, a large amount of food that we're serving, we've got big pans that we're gonna serve out of. All right, this is gonna be beneficial to get back into the corners Serve the same purpose as the other one, you just get a little more reach out of it. Next is our skimmer. So with our skimmer, this is used to skim stuff off the top of stocks. I can actually also use this if I just wanna strain something out. Here, I've got an assortment of food turners. So this long food turner, I'm gonna use this for something more like eggs. Um, if, I, if I got pancakes, so I can get in on the side of it, use that, and I can flip it over. This food turner with that rounded front, I'm gonna use this for something a little more sturdy. If I'm cooking steaks or bacon or something like that, I'm gonna use this, get in there, I can flip it over. All right, a lot more sturdy. This food turner, 
Probably one of the best ones we have. All right, heavy duty. I can use this to scrape my griddle as well as flip my steaks, eggs, burgers. Anytime I'm cooking meat, I'm looking for one of these food turners. My baker scraper. I'm gonna use my baker scraper. I use this to clean my griddle. I use it to clean my tabletops. Depending on what type of rations we have, I may get up on here, make bread, cookies. I'm gonna use my baker scraper the same way that I would use it in a regular kitchen. This is our food scoop. We're gonna use this anytime we have something that might stick to the spoon. Things like ice cream or mashed potatoes, refried beans, softer vegetables like spinach. We'll use that so we can get it in and ensure that everyone gets a proper portion size. Next, we have our tongs. Anytime we wanna grab something, we're gonna use our tongs. Next is our serving fork. I use this much in the same way as tongs. For things that are a little bit closer, a little bit smaller, I'll use my 15 inch fork. I've got my 21 inch fork, especially when I'm using my large griddle, I'm gonna use this 21 inch fork. Next is my whisk. So this right here is a rigid whisk. You can tell the tines on it are a little bit thicker. I can also use this to add air to stuff if I wanna make things like meringues or whipped cream. Next, I've got my rolling pin. Everybody knows what a rolling pin is for, but here we use it for a few other things. We use our rolling pin to break up ice for when we pre-chill our insulated food containers. We have a four quarter pitcher. When you're preparing food for 800 personnel, you don't have time for small measuring cups. Four quarter pitcher is gonna allow us to scale out, to measure out large amounts of liquid. If you don't need to go quite so big as four quarts, this is a one quart dipper. We're gonna use this to help transfer food from our large cooking pots to our serving dishes. Next, we have an eight ounce ladle. Now, precision is everything. We have a set of measuring spoons. We're gonna use our measuring spoons to ensure we're getting the right measurements according to those recipe cards. Everything we do is hot. So we've got our hot pads. We're gonna use these hot pads when we're moving hot pans we're removing stuff from the oven. I'll even use my hot pad sometime when I'm cleaning my griddle, just to give myself a little bit of protection from that hot stuff that's on the griddle. I've got a variety of serving pans. This is a half pan. Anyone who's worked in food service can identify this as a six inch half pan. We'll store food in here to serve it. We can prepare food in here even. Step up from the half pan is our six inch line pan. Some people may know it as a hotel pan. This is a six inch line pan. And that's all the equipment that a US Army culinary specialist uses in our containerized kitchen. <laughs> 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 jokes, jokes. <laughs>